I want you to that I serve is solid, nothing shall move him. He is my rock. Oh, man, satalabaka. And my fortress. What does the word fortress mean? God is my military stronghold. Though the enemy will try to come up against me and surround me, God is going to defeat him. What did God say? Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Strongly sorts are fortified. I am strongly fortified. Mm, say that I am. I am strongly fortified. Say it again. I am strongly fortified. I want you to know that I am strongly fortified because God has fortified me. The enemy is all around. He's trying to get in any kind of way under sideways. Uh, of the Bible tells us the great chief apostle said, uh, we are pressed on every side. But I want you to know that we've been fortified as well on every side. So he's trying to come in. He's trying to come in through the top. He's trying to come in through the sides. He's trying to come in through the bottom. But no weapon formed against you shall prosper. How come you know that? Because I've been fortified by the power of God. God is my fortification. Okay, I might have made up a word. But he is my fortification. I'm standing on solid ground because I'm standing on on the rock. I'm standing on solid ground because I'm standing on Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. He's standing on God, and God is standing on His Word. And there is no weapon formed against the Word that shall prosper, no weapon formed against God that shall prosper, no weapon formed against Jesus that shall prosper, and there is no weapon that's formed against me that shall prosper because God is not only my rock, but he's my fortification. My God, I'm excited about God. I'm excited about what God has done and what God is doing. He goes on to say God is also his deliverer. God has taken him out of his misery and delivered him on a solid ground. I want you to know God is your deliverer. He's going to go inside of you and deliver every one of those demonic influences in your heart. He's going to go inside of you and set you free from fear fear and anxiety and worry. God has not given you the spirit of fear because he has delivered you. He has gone into your living room, your bedroom, your dining room. I'm not talking about where you live, but I'm talking about all of the cavities on the inside of you. He has gone into your mind. He's gone into your mouth, into your ears. You're going to watch what you say. So watch what you hear. Have the eyes of God. Have the ears. He that have the ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Oh, he's going to make sure you walk the walk of faith. You're going to walk a good walk of faith. Your feet's going to be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You're going to have your loins, your sexual activity all protected. You will not be caught where you ought not be, but you you're going to stand strong like Joseph and say no and run out of the room. Even if they accuse you falsely, it'll be known by God what you have done. I want you to know that God is handing you the victory because he has delivered you. No weapon, no enemy on the inside of you shall prosper. Come on now, look at verse 2. Second of uh, uh, Samuel chapter 22, he said, this is what David said. David said, the Lord is my rock. He is my fortress and he's my deliverer. God is my deliverer. Oh my God, I'm so glad you have delivered me. How did I come out of what I was in? How it was apparently, I tell the story all the time, we lost the building because we couldn't afford it, 2513 St. Maurice. 
I ignored the people. I wouldn't answer the phone calls. I didn't have any money. I didn't know how I was going to pay them. I thought that if I ignored them that they would just somehow, I don't know, it was going to, I don't know. I was young. I didn't know. I didn't understand. Oh, but one day I went to answer the phone in the, in the kitchen of the, the church house that I was staying in. I don't know why I answered it, but it just so happened I answered it, and it was the people who had bought the second, the first people out. I had two mortgages on the building, and the second mortgager bought the first mortgage people holder out, and now they're telling me we bought the first mortgage people out, and now we're in the first position. And they told me I didn't own the building anymore, and they said I better come see them. I went down, and I was in a big room with four lawyers, and they were calling me all kinds of names, but I'm telling you, God delivered. And at the end of the day, the deal that they gave me was better. The second deal was better than the first. You better lift your hands and tell God, thank you. God, David says in Second uh, uh, Samuel chapter 22, verse 3, he says, the God of my rock in him will I trust. That's what I want to talk about today. Father, forgive me for not trusting you. Oh, my God. I want all of you preachers to understand you must put your total and complete trust in God. Glory, you have to have a firm belief in the reality and the truth and the ability and the strength of God. You have to believe. You have to have a firm belief. Your belief system has to be firm that no matter what God is allowing you to go through, no matter what he's taking you through, no matter what is happening in your life, I want you to know you must believe God that he is able. Oh, you must have trust me to so have a, a, a firm belief in the reality, the trust and the ability of God. Do you believe God is able to deliver you? Do you believe God is able to set you free? Do you know that there is no weapon that's formed against you that shall prosper? Are you able to lift up your hands right now and tell God you thank him for what you're going through right now? Or you may say somebody has passed in your life, but Job had 10 children and all of his servants to pass. But he did not complain and he did not murmur, but he lifted up his voice and he worshiped God. God is a spirit. And they that worship God must worship him in truth, in reality, in firm belief and reality and ability that that which God has called them to do is going to come to pass. Don't look at the fear. Look at God. He's not giving you that fear. That fear is the enemy trying to get you to live inside of false evidence that appear to be real. They are not real. It's false evidence. What's real is your belief and your faith and your trust in the God of the universe. You must accept the truth that God is real. You must accept that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything you ask or think. You must believe that your enemies are already defeated before they become your enemy. You must understand like Haman who, 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 who thought he could come up against the children of Israel and Mordecai and his, his relative Esther had to defeat him and God defeated him and had him hung on his own gallows. You need to understand, my friends, your enemy is already hung. You need to understand that the enemy of life is already underneath your feet. I don't care if you call him Satan, if you call him devil, if you call him evil, if you call him your bills, if you call him your boss, if you call him whoever or whatever. He or she is underneath your feet. Feet. You trample on that defeat, defeated one. You need to have confidence in God. Why don't you stand up right now? Why don't you stand up right now and lift up your right feet and put it down and stamp on that which has been having you. Stamp on fear. Stamp on doubt. Stamp on unbelief. Stamp on poverty. Stamp on those things that have had you locked down and made you to believe. Some of us have lived in poverty so long that we think 
poor, live poor, act poor. We are afraid to pay for something that will cost. We are afraid to buy stuff that will take care of us. We live poor, we, we will die poor. But I'm decreeing and declaring that you are not going to live poor and die poor because there is no shortage. Your confidence level in God, you are going to accept what I'm saying as truth. Accept this as truth. Accept these statements as truth. Uh, truth statements. Uh, without any doubt, without any fear, I want you to trust and believe in God. Ah, my friends, I want you to trust in God, the person you've never seen, the man you've never seen the what you've never seen, the who you've never seen, but he is as real as you and I. As you and I live in this natural world and we see things in the natural, his world is supernatural, so much superior than our world. His world is the world that controls our world, though I can only see in the natural and it apparently appears to be real to me. But what he does behind my scenes is far greater. He will give me an enemy and defeat the enemy that he has given me. <coughs> Somebody give God some glory. <coughs> Excuse me, let me get a little drink of this. Somebody give God some praise. Somebody magnify God. Somebody magnify God here today. I want you to know that the God I serve, he is able. Come on, lift your hands and say, God is able. Do it again. Say, God is able. God is able <clears throat> to do exceedingly abundantly above whatever we ask or think. Lift your hands and tell God you trust him. Lift your hands and tell God you trust him. <clears throat> Not only that, God is my rock. I trust him, David said. Not only is he my rock, but he's my shield. He's in front of me. He's protecting me. He's a piece of <clears throat> metal material. But he's spiritual. And he will not allow a dart. He will not allow a fiery dart to hit me. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, God will not allow a fiery dart to get to you. Oh, I don't care. What did God show the little prophet looking on the side of the mountain? He said, it would appear to me that we're outnumbered. But the great prophet said, Lord, open up his eyes that he might see that there's more with us than with them. I want you to know God is your shield, which means you have the shield of faith. Faith means you trust in God. You see it before it becomes a reality. What God has spoken to you to do may appear to be impossible, but I want you to know all things are possible. You must put your trust in God. I am telling you, my brothers and sisters, that God has become my shield. He protects me. I know, I know if the enemy had his way, he would. He would try to, no, he would stop me. He would defeat me. He would kill me. He would do things to me. But God's my shield. <clears throat> and that shield protects me. It's my fortress. Oh, it's not a spiritual wall. You cannot see it. But I want you to know God is on my side and God is on your side. Lift your hands and magnify him today. Oh, my God. He is now. He also said God is my horn of my salvation. God is my horn. You know, a horn is something you blow. But I want you to know it's, it's, it's something that you blow, my brothers and sisters. But think about it. That horn that God allowed Israel to make, 
that the rams had on the side of their head was so strong that when they butted up against another ram and the pressure came up against the other pressure by the thousands of pounds of pressure, it did not crack, it did not crack, it did not crack. My God, I want you to know God has become my horn. And I can blow. I can take that horn and I can blow a sound. I can be <coughs> become a prophet. <coughs> I can become my prophet and speak a word of life to you today. Lift your hands and magnify God. <clears throat> Come on now. Don't worry about this. Lift your hands and magnify God. He also said God is his what? It's high tower. High tower. Come on. High tower. High tower. What type of tower? High tower. My God, a giraffe, probably one of the tallest animals in the world today. And what makes him so great? He is taller than every animal. And any time the enemy comes in his direction, because his neck is 10, 12 feet taller than everybody else's, he can see the enemy coming from miles away. A rabbit is in trouble. Because before he can lift up his head, the enemy is on him. But God is my high tower. I see the enemy coming. And I say what they said in the New Testament. I see you, but you got nothing in me. I see you. You don't have to worry. You know he's coming. You start putting up your defense mechanism. The problem with most of you, you don't understand God is a high tower. He will allow you to see the enemy coming before he comes. My God, my God. He will allow you to see in the spirit world and see things happen before it happens. My friends, my God will allow you to be the freestanding building for your family. He will allow you to be the freestanding high tower. You're not a low tower, you're a high tower. You see, an eagle flies high. My God, my God, while a rabbit may look on the ground for what he wants, but an eagle sees the rabbit looking for his food and see the fox looking for his food, and the eagle can pick from any direction whatever he wants from miles away, but a rabbit can only see in front of him. I want you to know an eagle sees a whole field because he's extended way into the atmosphere. He is a bird that is on a high tower bird. He doesn't run around and pluck on the ground, but he soars on the highest mountains and in the air and in the upper atmosphere. I want you to know you will have victory when you see your enemy come a mile away. You will set up defense mechanisms before he gets there and you will say, uh-huh. You thought I didn't see you. You will set up your ambushments and he will fall right into them. God is your high tower. Somebody help me here. God is your high tower. And David goes on to say, he is my refuge. My God. What is a refuge? A place where you feel safe. Mm, 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 mm. A place where you feel safe mm, mm, mm. from those who pursue you. My God, from danger, from trouble, from those that's been talking negative about you, those that's been lying on you. Oh, God has become your refuge. He has allowed safety to be all around you. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, and every line demonic force that comes up against you is already destroyed. Why don't you lift your hands and tell God, Thank you. Why don't you lift your hands and give God the praise, the honor, and the glory? My friends, I want you to read the book of 2 Samuel chapter 22. I want that to become your song. I want it to become your praise. I want it to become your worship. I want you to tell God you are my 
are conditioned of being safe. And I am safe from those who pursue me. I am safe from danger. I am safe from trouble, safe from trouble. I am safe from those who are, are trying to provide institutional situations against me. Oh, you know that we're hearing all kind of institutional things that may happen to certain people in this magnificent country. But God is your refuge. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. You don't have to worry what man shall do unto you. For you will say, God is your helper. In him will you trust. My friends, I trust and pray that you've enjoyed this day. I want you to go to my Facebook page, Chief Apostle Leonard Lucas Jr., and tell me what you think about what we said today. I want to encourage you. And for those of you that's watching, I want you to sow into this ministry. Do it right now. Don't allow poverty to tell you you can't give. Don't allow the enemy to lie to you and tell you you can't sow a seed. I want you to sow right now. You can go to, uh, uh, you can call right now. The number is area code 504-279-1300. And sow that seed that the Lord has placed on your heart to sow. Oh, my friends, I want to hear from you right now. I want to speak a word of life to you. I want to speak a word of encouragement to you. So go to the phone and dial area code 504-279-1300. Let us speak into your life, into your heart. Let us tell you what thus saith the Lord, because this is the day God has made for you. That's right. You can also uh, write. You can write Light City Church, 6117 St. Claude Avenue, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70117. I know that God is speaking to you to do it, but you are afraid of your situations and your circumstances. Support what God is doing. This gospel is going around the world. My God, in the next week, we'll be in North America. My God, we're going to be preaching the gospel of Jesus in that country. And I'm looking forward to what the Lord is going to do. And I'm telling you, my friends, the gospel of Jesus must go into all nations. Are you ready? Are you ready, Mandeli Bosatalabaka? Are you ready to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ? This is the day the Lord has made. Why don't you spend the rest of this day lifting up your hands and magnifying him? Because my God is a good God. My friends, I want you to know that I thank God for you. I love you and I appreciate you. And I thank God for this magnificent day. For truly, it is the day of the Lord. God bless you is my prayer. Apostle William Harper, get ready, Georgetown. We are on our way. Hi, I'm a Chief Apostle Leonard Lucas, and I'm on my way to your community, into your city, into your country, and I am believing God for an explosion. I'm believing that God is going to move in a supernatural way, and I want you to get ready. You know what? I am believing God that a change is about to come to you. A change in your mind, a change in the way you've been doing things, a change in the way you've been living. God is calling his people to walk in victory. God is calling his people to be successful. God is calling his people to change the way they've been living so that they can walk in the abundance of the supernatural power of God. I am believing that we're going to have an explosion. That's right. I'm believing that the Holy Ghost is going to move in a supernatural way. So you need to get ready, get ready, because we're on our way. See you real soon.